Hi, I'm Lee Livengood, and I play clarinet and bass clarinet in the Utah Symphony. <laughs> I began playing clarinet in the fourth grade in my school band program. I ended up playing clarinet because that's what my parents had, and fortunately I ended up enjoying it and taking to it and continued on with clarinet through high school and into college. I didn't really start playing this instrument, the bass clarinet, until after college when I started working in orchestras. I would be playing the clarinet parts and hearing these wonderful parts and music coming from the bass clarinet. And at that point, I started thinking, this would be a very interesting instrument to start to explore. The other part of that is just a financial decision. Learning the bass clarinet opened up numerous opportunities for me, essentially doubling the chances to play an orchestra. One of the reasons that I'm, I think that I was drawn to the bass clarinet is that I also play the bass guitar, and I've played that since I was a kid and played in garage bands, so I guess I have an affinity for low voices, and uh, I still play the bass guitar as a hobby in addition to my work as a bass clarinetist. It was when I was in high school playing the clarinet where I started to feel like maybe it was possible this could be a career option for me. Um, I was enjoying it more and more. I'm getting to play in bands and orchestras and chamber music, and at that point I decided to go to college, especially for music, and see how that went. And fortunately for me, it went well, and I've continued from there through college and to a variety of orchestras, ending up in the Utah Symphony. The bass clarinet, of course, as a bass instrument, it adds to the bass voices of the orchestra. I play a lot with the cellos and the basses and frequently with the lower horns. So it adds to that bass voice in the orchestra, but it adds a particular color that no other instrument gives, the woodiness, a reediness into the texture that is unique and is used really marvelously by a lot of composers, particularly composers in the 20th and 21st centuries. One of the reasons I love it is because the sound is so unique and so variable. With the dynamic range is so great, I can play very soft, I can play very loud. Um, the voice is really based on the fact that it's a reed instrument, which is what's so wonderful about it and what gives it that uh, unique and wonderful sound. It also is what can be a struggle sometimes because a reed, it's a, it's a living thing. It's a piece of bamboo essentially. And it's different when you play. Every time your reed will feel a little bit different and reeds wear out and you need to get new reeds. So it's a constant process of trying to keep up with that so that you can play the instrument the way that you want to. And here's an example of the wide range of the bass clarinet. <laughs> One of the things that composers love about the bass clarinet is that it can play both very, very soft and very, very loud. For example, Often also in contemporary music we'll do something called flutter tongue. I own two bass clarinets. Um, this one is the one that I use in the orchestra primarily and it lives at our concert hall most of the time. Um, it's made out of wood with metal keys. I have a second bass clarinet that is the same model, except instead of wood, the material is a composite of wood and resin. That makes the instrument very stable. Uh, a lot of our work involves playing outdoors and traveling, and having an instrument that's not 
just made out of wood, but this more stable composite material makes it safer to use in all of the outdoor situations that we have. In addition to uh, adding to the bass voices, a lot of composers have written marvelous solos for the bass clarinet. Um, one of the things the bass clarinet has is a very large range. So you can play solos. Some are written very low on the instrument. You can also go very high. There's four octaves available on the bass clarinet. Um, and it gives composers a lot of possibilities for different kinds of sounds and colors with their orchestration. So here is what the instrument sounds like when you just play on the mouthpiece and the reed. Without the mouthpiece, there's nothing. And when we put the instrument back together, So in addition to playing the clarinet and the bass clarinet, I also design and restore and manufacture clarinet and bass clarinet mouthpieces. And this was something I got interested in about 25 years ago. I'm a tinkerer and a hands-on kind of guy and got interested in how this instrument works and started studying the mouthpieces and then started taking mouthpieces and making changes and alterations to try to find the way that they would work the best for me and then eventually for my friends and colleagues. So it's grown from there and now I make mouthpieces for clarinetists and bass clarinetists from all over the world. Uh, playing with a great symphony orchestra like the Utah Symphony is an unbelievable experience. Um, the sound when you're sitting in the orchestra is like nothing in the world. Um, it's a remarkable experience to come in every day and hear those sounds and be a part of making this unbelievable music. Russian composer Dmitry Shostakovich wrote wonderfully for the bass clarinet. In his Symphony No. 7, he wrote a beautiful solo that features the lowest register of the bass clarinet, and here's a very short passage from that solo. Uh. 